morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. I would like to invite you to read with me. I brought this rain stick from Amazon Rainforest. So we breathe. Just imagine breathing this golden light, this glorious light we breathe in. And breathe, when we breathe out, we breathe out all the sorrows and pain in our lives. You know, breathe out with this golden light. So let us begin. So let us breathe in. This golden light of love. And breathe out all our sorrows and pain. And we breathe in this golden light of love. And we breathe out all the sorrows, pain, and illness. We breathe more deeply this golden light of love. And we breathe out our pain and sorrow and our illness. I'm so happy to be with you in this historical congregation. And I'm so happy I can come to a congregation with this curly hair and flowers on my head. <laughs> As a preacher, I just become an official senior, <laughs> and I feel now I earned my life right to wear flowers wherever I go. So actually, when I was a young woman, I studied in India, and every morning I went to the temple with the flowers. And I'm, I was mesmerized by Indian women wearing flowers in their hair and go to the temple and worship. The first thing they do in the morning, they bring garlands of flowers and one blouse on their head and they offer their flowers to God. And I wanted to live like that. But as you know, I'm a systematic theologian, PhD, and a professor of Union Theological Seminary. If I go to my class with my flower wand, they said, we knew she's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a proof. She's crazy. Actually, you know, when you look at women who wear flowers, in our patriarchal culture, many people think, oh, is she a prostitute? <laughs> or is she mad? Or maybe she's a goddess. But today, I came with this hair because there is a Korean movie I just love. It's a welcome to, to Dong Mak Go. If you have any chance, please see this movie. In that movie, it is a imaginative mountain place, small village. They never experienced the world. And it is set during the Korean War. So North Korean soldiers came in, South Korean soldiers came in, and US soldiers came in. They all lost in the world, and they came to this village. And of course, you know, people welcome them because they don't know about the war. But these soldiers, they try to kill each other. And there is a young girl who is uh, low intelligence, and she's a little bit mad. 
And she has my hairstyle and all these flowers on. And she asked a question, fundamental question. Who are you? Who are you are here? And she become friends with everybody. I just saw this movie crying all the time. I'm sure many of you are just into Korean dramas nowadays, like a crash landing on you, Squid Game or Pachinko. And there are messages radical in these movies. And what I saw in the movie was through this mad girl with the flowers. She just said with all the soldiers, you are my friend. North Korean soldier, you are my friend. South Korean soldier, you are my friend. American soldier, you are my friend. It's a movie, but what I saw in it is the gospel I heard. I am in you, you are in me. And God sent me, Jesus, to let you know that God is also in you. And God has given me glory, and I want to share this glory with you. What is the glory of God in Johannine Gospel? I love, love, love Johannine Gospel. Why? This is like an Asian Gospel to me. When Johannine Gospel is translated into Korean and into Chinese, they said, in the beginning there is words, logos. And they translated it literally. In the beginning, there is a Tao. I said, bingo, yes, that's my God. In the beginning, there is a Tao. And this Tao, Tao means way. Way of awakening. Way of enlightenment. In the beginning, there is a way. Tao. And joining gospel, has taught to us we only know God. You know, when I teach in systematic theology class, this is epistemology, <laughs> divine epistemology. How do you know God? Joining in gospel may be very simple. You know God by loving. That's the only way you know God. And you need God. I think the glory, that glory Jesus tried to give us, I wonder what is that glory he wanted to give us? I think what Jesus tried to give us is you are love. You are divine. Don't forget that. And there's a beautiful word. Because I love you, loved you from the even before the creation. I think this is a Christian cosmology. There is something even we cannot describe but that force made everything possible that force made this creation that force made you that force create our art our politics our church our religion the divine creative force, which is also love. That is very, very basic teaching.
teaching of many ancient religions. Like Taoism, obvious in the beginning there's a Tao. And the best life is you live according to that Tao. And Hinduism, we are all avatars of God in a way. So I chose my avatar. His first day, I said, I will choose Shiva, Lakshmi, and Ganesh. <laughs> Combination, cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I cannot be one. Shiva, radical destroyer and creator. I want to be there. I think I earned that as a senior woman, raising granny now. <laughs> destroy of radical evil in this world. And I create, rather than begging, giving me crumbs of your table, I create reality of that love, that glory, wherever I go, Shiva. Then also Ganesh, God of intelligence, you know, we have to trust our lived experience, lived wisdom, and Ganesh also destroy all the stumbling blocks. I need that. And Lakshmi, the goddess of beauty, love, and abundance. I want to live like that. That's why I wear flowers tonight, today. So, you know, yes, last night, well, while I was uh, preparing this sermon and reading my sermon, I heard that Korean drama, Korean director become the best director award from Cannes Film Festival. And also, a Korean male, maybe you saw some, the man in uh, the movie Parasite, he became a best Male Actor Award. So I felt very proud of this Korean artist. And as a theologian, I see what is the basis of this spirituality and aesthetic, aesthetic of these Korean dramas nowadays. So hot, so demand demanded by people all around the world. That is a very deep collective unconscious, unconsciousness of Korean people. But all these artistic flowers coming from their soil. And their soil itself, I want to call it the deepest Korean spirituality. So I want to share this very deep Korean spirituality with three words, it's Korean words. One is Han, another is Chung, another is Hung. Maybe we can do together, Han, Han. Chung, Chung, Hung. Hung. These three words are just core of core of Korean spirituality. Han is, maybe some of you study theology, Korean Minjung theology, which is the theology of oppressed. They define Han is, you experience so much radical evil and injustice, but you don't have a power to destroy all this evil. So what, you become like a pressure cooker. You become like a time bomb, ticking. Out of anger, out of shame, out of helplessness, hopelessness, despair. And you just want to die because of this radical, radical injustice done to you. I'm sure all of you, one way or another, 
you felt bad kinds of feeling in your life. It means what it means to be human, join the club. But there are two kinds of uh, Han in Korea. One is one Han and one is Chung Han. One Han is you become so angry, you need to revenge. So there are many ghost stories in Korea. Because you could not do revenge in this life, so you become a ghost and you make, you bother, you really bother your perpetrator even when you die. So there are four of ghost stories. I grew up with ghost stories. But there is another expression of a Han, which we call Chung Han, which means you become like a Mm, Korean kimchi. You just, uh, you know, there's like uh, so much fermentation in yourself. You become like an old, old, old wine. You transcended your suffering in your own way, making way out of nowhere. Whatever lifeline you took, and you didn't destroy yourself, but you are so permanent. <laughs> so your soul transformed. That become art. Your painting, your dance, your poetry. That is a Han. So many people say, "What is Han in English?" I said, "There's no English." But Something similar to is like African American people say in their blues, I feel so blue. I love you, I hate you, leave me, don't leave me. All these contradictions of life. Feeling so blue. That is kind of fun. Then how people are not destroyed by this harm, this immense suffering. It's a two things, Chung and Hung. Chung is it's Korean kind of love, but it's beyond the love. We have this tradition when strangers go hungry, you invite them and feed them. If you don't know anything about them, but they're just hungry, they're wounded, you welcome them and care for them. It's a very, very strong tradition in our culture. So sometimes, it is so touchy-feely, I got, you know, I have been living in USA so long. I learn about individualism. I learn about the personal boundaries. And don't do this too much, you know. But when I don't go back to Korea, I feel like my soul is dried out. My battery is gone. So I have to go back to these touchy-feely people just giving out, just pouring out their heart to be recharged. This is more than love. It's like a deepest compassion. The deepest compassion that we are suffering together. We are in the same, in the same boat, in this suffering. So I know your suffering. So I share whatever I have. That is a chung. So many uh, foreign friends who lived in Korea, they said, after living in Korea so long, in the beginning, oh, Koreans, oh, they are so much into my life. But when they are about to go back to their country, they said, you know, number one item you have to export to the world is Korean chung. This heartfelt warm sentiment. And third one, I would say, hung. What is hung? Hung is when Korean people, we are very small country between Japan and China. We are invaded everybody. USA, USSR, you know, Russia. In our 5,000 year history, we are invaded more than 
3,000 times. So every two years we had a war. And what does it to your soul? You know, very small country, we had to work so hard to survive. So your whole body become like a logic. Then people get together in an open field and they start to drum. And they start to dance under the full moon. To the degree they dance, to the degree they lose themselves. Total ecstasy. Total transcendence. There they meet God. So in a way, this combination of Han, Chung, Hung, Korean people made a very deep soup, like a soup base. So every like, intellectual discourse and artistic discourse, a film, movie, like a BTS. You know, young people are crazy about the BTS. And <laughs> Where do they come from? I think it came from this broth, which is broth of being of our ancestors. And I wonder, even they existed before Jesus was born, maybe people say it's not a Christian spirit, but you know, if we believe that God created everything, in their suffering and ecstasy and their this heartfelt loving and giving, I'm sure our Creator God was there. And I want to call this growth of my ancestor glory. All the ingredients of what it means to be divine is cooked there. Out of that broth, they made all kinds of food. Film, movie, intellectual discourse, and candle revolution. You know, we impeached our president for six months every weekend. Millions of people, with, only with a candle, went out to claim justice for our country. So, Whenever I see Joanne Gospel and encounter Joanne Gospel, I encounter even God before Jesus. And this whatever that force loved so fiercely even before creation. That is a really gift of Joanne Gospel. And with the Joanne Gospel, we can meet the spirituality of entire earth. Because in the beginning, there is this power. There is a wisdom. And out of this Han, Chung, Hung, Korean spirituality brought out, and what they did was Salim. I call myself, myself Salimist theologian. Salim means Korean woman's everyday chore, cooking, taking care of children, you know, uh, taking care of an ill person, and making a garden, cleaning, feeding, raising. Children and animals, very mundane chore. Like what I believe Ada Maria Isasi Diaz, where is the theology? Loco Tidiano, every miss, every day miss of spirituality. And it is, you know, considered, oh, just a woman's work. We call it Salim. But literal meaning of Salim means make everything alive. So from her heart power, from her suffering, her transcendence of suffering, and her heartfelt giving, and her ecstasy, with that everyday small love, caring, everything become fully alive. 
So rather than I call myself an eco-feminist, I call it Salinist. Isn't that more grand, more poetic? Rather than you know, women's liberation and nature liberation together, eco-feminism. But it doesn't matter whether you are young and old, man and woman. When you touch, when you care, with your heart, you're stirring at your ecstasy. Everything becomes so big and vivid and full of life, aliveness in its excellence. For me, being a Christian means being a Salinist. Wherever I go, even with a small love, small life, I want person I meet or nature I meet, a little bit more alive. That aliveness, that giving life, that is God. And that is also joining vision of mission of Jesus. Why I'm here? I came here to give you life in its fullness. Isn't that so wonderful? Not just the Jesus, all of us have a mission. Because he is in me and I am in him. And God is in him then God is in me. I am a divine spark, divine being, and I share that divinity, which is source of love and creation wherever I go, and I make things fully alive. That is the vision. I want to share. Never forget the glory which is given to you. Always remember that glory. Each and every one of us are glorious beings in our own shape and in our own character. And how often we forget about So this bring out our divinity and bless everything we touch, everybody we touch with this element, making things alive. That was a glorious mission of what it means being a Christian today. So thanks to God, thanks John, thank you Jesus. And thank you, this congregation, to celebrate and to remember this message. So, so it be. Amen. Amen.